Hello everyone. So today we will study about the antihistamines or antihistaminics. We will study about their pharmacology and clinical uses. Antihistamines also known as antihistaminics are the class of drugs used to counteract the effect of histamine. Histamine is a chemical that is released by the body during an allergic reaction. Hist antihistaminics work by blocking the action of histamine on the histamine receptors thereby they reduces and prevent the symptoms associated with the allergies. A primary therapeutic effect of the antihistamines include relief of the allergy symptoms. Antihistamines help to reduce the symptoms such as sneezing, itching, runny nose and watery eyes by blocking the histamine mediated responses. Anti-itching effects. By blocking the histamine receptors, antihistamines can reduce the itching associated with the allergic skin conditions insect bites and hives. Sedation. First generation antihistamines can cause the drowsiness and sedation due to their ability to cross the blood brain barrier and affect the central nervous system. Next is the antiemetic effect. First generation antihistaminics have antiemetic properties also, making them useful in the prevention and treatment of the nausea and vomiting. So these first generation antihistamines were the earliest antihistamines developed and are known for their sedating effects. They work by binding to and blocking the histamine receptors in the various tissues including the blood vessels, respiratory tract and the central nervous system. This binding prevents the histamine from showing its effects leading to reduction in the allergy symptoms. All the available H1 receptor antagonists are the inverse agonist that reduces the activity of the receptor. These receptors inverse agonist reduces the activity of the receptor and they also compete with the agonist that is histamine for binding to the histamine receptors. And what is the inverse agonist? Inverse agonist is a drug that binds to the same receptor as an agonist but induces a pharmacological response opposite to that of the agonist like a neutral antagonist has no activity. They are also sometimes called the blockers like alpha blocker, beta blocker, calcium channel blockers but the inverse agonist has opposite action to those of the agonist. Like histamine, when the histamine binds to the histamine receptors, it produces a fully active conformation and this fully active conformation produces the response. Histamine receptor will give the response. But when antihistamine binds to the histamine receptor, it yields an inactive conformation. Now we will see what are the effect of the antihistamines on the physiological system. First we will study about the smooth muscles. Now H1 antagonists inhibit most of the effect of the histamine on the smooth muscles especially the constriction of the respiratory smooth muscles. Now H1 antagonists inhibit both vasoconstrictor effect also and to certain extent vasodilator effect also. Now vasodilator effect on the smooth muscles or the endothelial cells is mediated by both H1 receptor and H2 receptor. H1 antagonist inhibits the more rapid vasodilator effect mediated by the activation of H1 receptor on the endothelial cells. But the remaining vasodilation that is due to the activation of H2 receptor on the smooth muscles that will be antagonized or suppressed by the administration of the H2 receptor antagonist. So H1 receptor antagonist to a certain extent reduces the more rapid vasodilator effect that is mediated by activation of the H1 receptors. Next is the immediate hypersensitivity reaction or anaphylaxis and allergy. Now during the hypersensitivity reaction, histamine is one of the many potent autocoids released. Many, many autocoids are released during the allergic reactions. Histamine is the potent one and histamine causes the edema and the itching redness. So this edema formation and the itching it is effectively suppressed by the H1 receptor antagonist. Other effects such as hypotension it is well it is not uh, very well antagonized. This is maybe due to participation of the other H receptors also but bronchoconstriction is also little reduced. Next is the local anesthetic effect. Now some of the drugs like phenyramine, promethazine, diphenhydramine has a strong while others have weak membrane stabilizing properties.
However, they are not used clinically as a local anesthetic because they causes irritation when they are injected subcutaneously. Now the capillary permeability. H1 antagonist strongly block the increased capillary permeability that is increased during the allergic reactions. So H1 antagonist strongly block the increased capillary permeability and formation of edema and veil caused by the release of histamine. Next is on the central nervous system. The older antihistamines or the first generation antihistamines produces a variable degree of sinus depression. This is because they cross the blood brain barrier. This appears uh, to depend on the compound's ability to penetrate the blood brain barrier and its affinity for the central that is compared to the peripheral its affinity for the central h1 receptors the end first generation antihistamines causes the blood brain crosses the blood brain barrier and it causes the it is it results in the sedation or drowsiness next is on the blood pressure now most of the antihistamine causes a fall in bp on iv injection however this is not evident on the oral administration Now, H1 antihistamines are classified in three categories highly sedative, moderately sedative, and mild sedative. Highly sedative includes diphenhydramine, dimenhydrinate, promethazine, hydroxyzine. Moderately sedative are phenyramine, ciproheptidine, meclozine, and cinarazine. Mild sedative are chlorphenyramine, dexchlorphenyramine, triprolidine, and clemastin. Now, first generation antihistamines also have additional properties like anticholinergic property that is blocking of the action of the acetylcholine therefore some are effective in preventing the motion sickness like promethazine diphenhydramine diminhydrinate and maclozine have prophylactic value in the milder type of motion sickness and it should be taken one hour before starting the journey promethazine can also be used in morning sickness drug induced and post operative vomiting and radiation sickness also it also has an anti emetic effect anti emetic effect is preventing the nausea and vomiting like promethazine controls the vomiting of pregnancy and other causes also promethazine and few other antihistamines reduces the tremor rigidity and sialuria that is hypersalivation of parkinsonism because of the anticholinergic and the sedative properties Ciproheptidine have appetite stimulating effect therefore it is used to increase the appetite. Cinarazine have additional anticholinergic anti serotonin sedative and vasodilator properties which has been widely used in vertigo. So diminhydrinate is the another effective anti vertigo anti histaminic. Chlorphenyramine Diphenhydramine and promethazine are constituents of many popular cough remedies also. Now we will study about the pharmacokinetics. What is the absorption, metabolism, excretion, distribution. So conventional H1 antihistaminics are well absorbed orally and by the parenteral roots. They are metabolized in liver and excreted in urine. They are widely distributed in the body and enters the brain. They crosses the blood brain barrier. The newer compounds penetrate the brain poorly, accounting for their low or absent sedating effect. Like second generation antihistamines, they have low or absent sedating effect. Therefore, they can be used while driving in the daytime. Duration of action of most of the agents is 4 to 6 hours, except maclozine, chlorphenyramine. Mesolastin, loratidine, citrazine, and fexofenadine. These are some of these are second generation antihistamines which act for the 12 to 24 hours or more. Now the side effects and the toxicity. Sedation, diminished alertness, concentration, lightheadedness, motor incoordination, fatigue, tendency to fall asleep are the most common symptoms of first generation antihistamines. Patient should be warned not to operate motor vehicles or machinery requiring the constant attention. 
dryness of the mouth, alteration of all movements, urinary hesitancy, and blurring of the vision can be due to anticholinergic property. These are the side effects of the first generation antihistamines. Acute overdose produces the central excitation, tremors, hallucination, muscular incoordination, convulsions, flushing, and hypotension and fever also. Now, second generation antihistamines. These are newer antihistamines that were developed to reduce the sedating effect of the first generation antihistamines. They are more selective in targeting the peripheral histamine receptors and have limited penetration into the central nervous system. As a result, they produce less sedation and these are preferred during the daytime. Higher H1 selectivity and no anticholinergic side effects. Additional anti-allergic mechanism is also shown in the H2 uh, in this second generation antihistaminics apart from the histamine blocking. Some also inhibits the late phase allergic reaction by acting on the leukotrienes or by antiplatelet activating factor effect. They have poor antipruritic, antiemetic and antidressive actions. So they are not generally used in the cuff syrups. They are not used uh, to decrease the vomiting or they are not much used for the itching. They have poor antipruritic, antiemetic and antidressive actions. Now, principal indications of the second generation antihistamines are second generation antihistamines are used in the allergic rhinitis, conjunctivitis, hay fever, and polyneurosis. It controls the sneezing, runny nose, red, watery, itchy eyes. It is also used in the urticaria, dermographism, ectopic seizema, and second generation antihistamines are also used in the acute allergic reactions to the drug in the foods. Now we'll see examples of second generation antihistamines. Fexofenadine, we will include some of the important points, not all, like fexofenadine is the active metabolite of terfenadine. Loratidine, desloratidine is the major metabolite of loratidine. Citrazine, citrazine is the metabolite of hydroxyzine. Citrazine penetrates the blood brain barrier poorly but mild sedation and subjective drowsiness is experienced by many so sedative uh, citrazine is a mild sedative or it produces some drowsiness because it penetrates the blood brain barrier poorly levocitrazine is safe it is the enantiomer of citrazine it, it shows less sedation side effects azelastin it inhibits the histamine release and inflammatory reactions triggered by the leukotrienes and platelet activating factor. It is given by the nasal spray for the seasonal and perennial allergic rhinitis. Mesolastin, abastin, it is converted to the active metabolite carbastin. Rupatidine, additional platelet activating factor antagonist property it also has. So thank you for your time and attention guys. In next video we will study about the H2 receptor antagonist. So to watch my videos subscribe to my channel so that you can get the notification of my videos please like my content and share if you like it thank you very much